okay so good afternoon everyone uh, this is uh, edward lawrence opena your course instructor for microbiology so we are now on module three it's entitled microbial metabolism nutrition growth and ecology again this is topic number three okay so we have to remember that every cell those that are um, those cells that made our made up our body okay those sing, uh, unicellular multicellular uh, organisms are made up of cells and in turn these cells are actually made up of different um, molecules because life at its base is actually um, molecules okay so each cell whether it is prokaryotic or eukaryotic utilizes uh, molecules and produces molecules okay so in this topic we will understand how microbial cells are utilizing these different molecules in the environment uh, that can sustain its existence and how these molecules can contribute to the cells growth and ecology okay so um, Living things need different elements, such as uh, uh, we call these these elements as nutrients. So most of these are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen, nitrogen, um, potassium, uh, phosphorus, and sulfur. So these are actually the most common uh, different elements that made up our cells. Okay, so remember that in your basic chemistry particularly bi uh, basic biochemistry these different elements will form uh, different molecules that will help in the repair and the formation of new cells okay so most uh, can be classified as macro micronutrients uh, so some of these are, are actually micronutrients mean to say they are needed by the cells in lesser quantity or some cells need m m bigger quantity of these elements and they are and those uh, nutrients that are um, in bigger quantities that are consumed by the cells are termed as ma macro nutrients okay so there are also those that are known as trace elements so trace elements uh, they are actually way below the smaller quantities uh, again, that requires a cell. So, example for that are magnesium, manganese, you have zinc, and nickel. Where, in fact, there are also some microorganisms or cells that are using or utilizing gold and silver. Okay, so microbes acquire their nutrients either in, or in organic and inorganic sources. So, in basic biochemistry, when we say organic, uh, molecules they are those that are uh, having carbon to carbon chains okay so example example for organic molecules you have the four biomolecules you have the nucleic acids we have the um, proteins carbohydrates and lipids and of course there are also those that are needed by the, the cells that are inorganic by nature example for that is water okay so take a look at uh, figure 3.1 those are actually the different um, molecules that are mostly utilized by the cell okay so um, the contents of microbial cytoplasm when you say cytoplasm that is the entirety of the inner portion of the cell so the microbial cytoplasm is 70% water okay so this actually accounts even in in uh, eukaryotic cells even those cells that are uh, that are in our body are actually 70 percent water this is the very reason why water is one of the um, indispensable kanabitang pinaka importante nga, nga molecule <coughs> so sa kasal okay because the cytoplasm itself the cell itself is made up of 70 percent water so the most pre prevalent biomolecule is pro protein okay so um, 80% or 70% 70 to 80% of 
the dry weight of a cell is actually protein. Okay, so 90% are organic compounds. So either it's um, protein or carbohydrates or lipids or nucleic acid. So that's the the composition, the main major composition of a microbial cell. So car uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur accounts for 90% of a cell's dry, dry weight. So you have to remember that CHONPS are actually the main elements that made up the biomolecules. That is why in totality, 90% um, of a cell's dry weight are made up of these elements. Okay, so um, you can also consider figure 3.2. So in figure 3.2, that's the cytoplasm, that's actually the, the inside of the cell, or even uh, the plasma membrane. Okay, remember the plasma membrane it is made up of phospholipid by layers, two layers of phospholipid uh, molecules. So they are actually still uh, made up of different molecules, only that they are arranged specifically to form specific structures and have their specific functions in in cells so you can see there in the figure 3.2 that the phospholipid bilayer on this uh, uh, the plasma membrane uh, there are also other uh, molecular complexes okay so different biomolecules are uh, attaching uh, attachments are different biomolecules such as the glycolipid there so that's the complex between glucose and lipid molecules and you can also have uh, glycoproteins okay so nutrient sources so when you talk about nutrient sources um, different organisms are classified based on the sources of their nutrients so for those um, carbon uh, consuming microbes there are those that are known as heterotrophs and there are those that are autotrophs so when we say heterotrophs they acquire their carbon from organic source and that's organic compound so that's heterotroph so uh, microorganisms that uh, for example fungi they actually um, degrade larger or decaying matter okay so that's the decaying matter are actually organic compounds that's why uh, they use up the carbon that made up this decaying matter so they are considered as heterotrophs so nagdepende sila sa other uh, organic compounds for their carbon source however there are those that are known as uh, autotrophs which means that they source their carbon from inorganic sources okay so ang ilang carbon are from inorganic sources so opposite ning heterotrophs and autotrophs Okay, what about nitrogen? So, the atmosphere is the best reservoir of nitrogen. Okay, where in fact, um, sa, diba sa atong atmos atmosphere, around 79% are made up of nitrogen. And around 21% or 20% uh, are, is actually oxygen. Okay, so, take note that nitrogen is one of the uh, most important elements that can, uh, that, uh, are utilized by the cells okay so how do this uh, nitrogen in the atmosphere be utilized by by microbes so they cannot actually ang micro ang microbes they cannot uh, readily utilize the nitrogen present in air okay so what happens is that during uh, thunderstorm or during rain some of this nitrogen are carried by raindrops okay so by the time nga na ay mutulo ang ulan and then this rain will reach the ground then this nitrogen will will then be utilized that's the time that microorganisms can utilize um, different <laughs> or nitrogen that is why uh, there is this what we call nitrogen fixation so uh, nitrogen fixation will allow some bacteria to transform atmospheric nitrogen into usable form so by the time nga nana to makuha to there are there are microorganisms known as nitrogen fixing bacteria or nitrogen fixing microorganisms okay so this group will then transform this atmospheric nitrogen into usable forms take note that amino acids the uh, building blocks of protein are actually heavily made up of nitrogen okay so ilahading i-convert into amino acid ang nitrogen from the atmosphere 
via uh, katong raindrops and katong thunder uh, katong may naadtong hinatong mga atmospheric disturbances okay so ang amino acid will then be um, integrated sa plants and then we consume the plants then that's how we get amino acids okay so there is the nitrogen fixing bacteria or nitrogen fixing microorganisms are the ones that will fix this nitrogen from the atmosphere and another one here the oxygen okay so major component in synthesis of biomolecules okay so oxygen so for instance we have uh, glucose glucose is mainly made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen okay now um, take note that oxygen is not really there are there are microorganisms that can call, tolerate the absence of oxygen okay so it is not true that all living organisms require oxygen where in fact um, there are microorganisms whose presence of oxygen is actually lethal to their existence okay pero gamay rak na siya nga group okay so other important nutrient sources you have hydrogen you know, which is actually used for acidity and the bonding between different molecules and of course the free energy there are redox reaction if i remember in yung biochemistry okay so what else phosphorus used for nucleic acid formation sulfur synthesis of vitamins and amino acids sodium for cell transport potassium membrane function cell uh, calcium sodium <laughs> calcium cell wall stability magnesium membrane stability iron cell respiration zinc binding factors for some enzymes and other trace elements okay you can actually still find <coughs> some of these trace elements in your in uh, in the book in the textbook that we we are using okay what about the autotrophs okay the autotrophs derive their energy in sunlight okay we know we call them those that derive their energy from sunlight as photoautotrophs and chemical reactions or the chemoautotrophs. So photoautotroph from the word photo, which means sunlight, and of course chemoautotrophs from the word chemical. So photoautotrophs photo are the basis of the food chain. Why? Because the photoautotrophs are actually the species that are. Uh, observing that are classified as photoautotrophs are actually uh, those that can do photosynthesis for instance uh, photosynthetic bacteria okay what else the plants okay so um, organisms that are said to be photoautotrophs are the basis of the food chain so it is important that we have to establish the food chain to start an ecosystem okay so ang pinaka important yun sa ecosystem is um, ilang food chain so we, we can we can say that a healthy food chain will result in a healthy ecosystem okay so in chemoautotrophs there are two types so there are those that are um, chemo organic autotrophs so organic compounds for energy and inorganic compounds as carbon source we also have lino uh, litho autotrophs independent from light and inorganic nutrients and rely uh, totally in organic min minerals now there are also those what we call uh, methanogens these are bacteria that contributes methane uh, contributes not to, me to methane contributes methane in natural gas so that's the uh, <coughs> natural gas okay so methane so diba remember sa kanabitaw mga swampy area so swampy areas especially kanang mga ancient lakes there is this kanabitaw daghang kain isla ng tabunan nga mga reserve sa kanang mga katong mga previous nga mga plants okay so kato siya there are microorganisms nga na produce so much methane and actually methane is flammable in some degrees it is actually flammable okay so katong mga swamps mga marshes are actually potential uh, sources of energy because of methane that are produced by microorganisms what about heterotrophs so heterotrophs they acquire energy and carbon from organic compounds manitong dimension ganiha so it uses also for use for aerobic uh, respiration that yields 
um, energy. Okay? So, saprobes feed on dead animals. Katong mga saprophytic. Okay? Example na katong mga uh, uh, tao, mga fungi. Okay? And katong mga bacteria. Some, some bacteria are actually um, heterotrophs. Okay? So, parasites feed from cells and this is a living host. Those are the pathogens. Okay? So, that's parasitic. Uh, so, Katong mga parasites, we can also um, consider them as heterotrophs because they acquire their carbon and energy from organic compounds. Even, even katong dili mga decaying, even living ang mga tissues, even living ang mga organisms, pwede na siya iparasitize, pwede na siya uh, kuwaan og source of energy and carbon from uh, ad, by other uh, group of microorganisms. So, most are the, composer, the composers that recycle nutrients in the environment. And this is the very reason why recycle, mga decomposers, they are very important in, in the ecosystem because they, they tend to recycle nutrients. Because kanang food na ito ang enjoy karon, whether it is um, animal food or plant food. Okay? They were once uh, part of a species okay i mean they were um, they were once part of a different living organism okay different uh, groups of organisms so kana siya so gina recycle lang siya so when an organism dies kaning panalitan if a human <coughs> being dies okay matay ang isa ka tao <coughs> so the molecules that made up our body will be will will decay it will be recycled and it will be katong mga nutrients is ma-recycle to siya and utilized by other uh, groups of organisms. Okay? So, what about the molecular and water movements? So, take note that in cells, cells um, need different molecules nga musulod sa ilahang sa cytosol or sa cytoplasm. Okay? Because take note that cells na ni sila gitawag na tong wear and tear. Okay? Diba? Kung ang atong sakyanan natin ay sakyanan or na ito. Example, ang atong balay. Ang atong balay is bago na siya. So, after a couple of years na ay madaot, ato na pong i-repair. Okay? So, the same is true with the cells. Sa atong mga sakyanan. Parehas ato ang sakyanan. Kung na ay madaot, mahilis ang ligid. Ilisan itong ligid. Maagoba ang manubila. Ilisan itong manubila. I mean, similar na siya sa cells nga, nga since ang cells is active na siya, alive na siya, na ano mga components nga 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 daot. So what happens is that it needs a it has it it actually has a repair mechanism. So asama sila manguha og materials to repair since they are made up of molecules therefore they need to utilize molecules and they need to um, transport or allow the entrance of these molecules into its into its uh, system. Okay? So there are different movements. Uh, number 1 here is diffusion. Okay, so when we talk about diffusion, this is the movement from higher concentration to lower concentration. Okay, and this is actually commonly illustrated by the movements of water and the solutes. Okay, so take note that molecules are always in constant motion. Okay, so magsigilan din nag-move ang, ang motion even in solid state. Kanang ato ang mga solid ng mga objects na nasla yung mga vibration. Okay, so, iba basic na siya nga physics and I, I, I hope nga you have enjoyed the discussion of this um, molecular movements uh, sa inyong physics. Mm. Naidigan hag physics din he. <laughs> okay, so, kana siya. So, next is higher temperature means ha faster thermal movements. Okay, so, take note nga, why is it nga uh, mas Bisan sa ato abitaw kana bitaw maka if you, if you can observe yourself nga kana kung igang gani kayo ang panahon the more ka nga magsigi ka og lihok di ba i mean you are at, at uneasy bitaw kung it is because um higher temperature will require nga magmove ang imuhang mga mga kana bitaw mga molecules okay sa so, pananglitan ang kanang sa sa water nagita na to anong water when it boils we can just imagine nga nga water molecules magpaspas na kay na ilahang ilahang motion however 
cooler nga mga temperature, mas lesser ang movement sa molecules. So, makita po na ni mo nga kung tugnaw gani, lisod, kaayo, ilihok-lihok. Kay gami kayo i-ligid lang. ba? Diba? So, it can also be observed even at the macroscopic scale. Okay? So, there are actually some explanations to that. So, in in cytoplasm, movements are unpredictable. Okay? So, since ang kaning mga molecules, they don't have senses, so they just depend, their movement just depend on the pressure, on the temperature available in the, in, in the environment. And uh, microorganisms will tend to respond to the movements of these molecules. Okay? Take note hang na mangita po ni sila og source. Okay? Bacteria will hunt for food, not, not hunt because mangita na mangita sila og kanang molecules. They, they will actually tend to go to um, areas or regions where there's sufficient amount of molecules for them to metabolize. Okay? So, in cells, diffusion depends on concentration gradient and permeability. Okay? So, take note nga sa to ang plasma membrane sa, sa phospholipid bilayers, there are channels. Okay? There are actually channels nga where these molecules can pass. So, uh, in figure 3.3, um, when you talk about diffusion, that's the free uh, transportation or uh, free movement of uh, molecules across the plasma membrane without using channels. However, there are those that are what we call the facilitated diffusion where it requires mostly protein channels to um, transport the uh, uh, transport ang molecules from the outside to the inside of the cell. Okay, so water moves via osmosis, which is the movement through a selectively permeable membrane. So there are also this, what we call the isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solution. So when you say isotonic, the movement uh, of molecules from the outside and from the inside of the cell is equal. Hypotonic, cell cytoplasm of higher solute content ang sa solute. And the hypertonic uh, solution are those whose exterior environment have higher solute uh, content. Okay? So, <coughs> 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 so, in hypertonic solution, since ang hypertonic is mas daghan ang solutes nga naa sa gawa sa cell, what happens is that it will tend, the water molecules tend to get outside the cell. Okay, so mugawas ang water molecules. So, kay mas daghan man ang water molecules sulod sa cell. So, what will happen is there is what we call the plasmolysis. Okay, the cell will shrink. Okay, <coughs> because take note ha, that i-equalize niya ang dapat ang kaning gitawag nilang uh, amount of molecules from inside and outside the cell. On the other hand, if um, there are more water molecules outside the cell than there are in the inside of the cell what happens is that water molecules will tend to get inside the cell and this this cell and this will cause the cell to increase its size more mo, mo swell siya and it will cause cytolysis okay so cytolysis it will burst okay modako siya now when we talk about isotonic solution the amount of solutes and water is equal okay sa outside of inside the cell Okay, so when we talk about uh, active transport, when you say passive, uh, there are also, when we talk about transport of nutrients, uh, there is this what we call the passive and active transport. Passive transport does not require uh, ATP. Okay, so, however, even though nga passive na siya, it is still regulated by the cell. On the other hand, active transport, free living organ microbes exist in relatively relatively nutrient starved condition and must not rely totally on passive transport active transport transports nutrients against diffusion gradient and it is possible with membrane proteins and pumps and requires energy as opposed to passive transport larger molecules are imported or exported via endocytosis phagocytosis and pinocytosis from the, so from the word itself active so it requires the action of atp diba? uh, similar to uh, the passive transport we have these uh, channels okay the uh, gateway or door in the passive transport is that it does not require 
um, ATT aron mo open ang ang channels and, and transport proteins. However, in the active transport, it needs still the action of uh, the adenosine triphosphate for the channels to open and transport proteins. Okay, kana siya. So that's the difference between active and passive transport. Okay. So let's now go to uh, 3.2, uh, section 3.2, <coughs> microbes and the environment. So there are some factors that affects uh, microbes. First is the temperature. So when we talk about temperature, diba, we have discussed archaeans. Diba? So archaeans, um, they, um, they inhabit the most extreme environments, katong mga thermophiles. There are those uh, that are uh, inhabiting uh, katong witawag na tong uh, too cold ng mga environment or too hot ng mga environment. Okay, so kana siya. However, in most most bacteria, kaning mga bacteria na to, na nasla gitaw na to optimal ng mga temperature. Na nasla mga required maximum slash minimum ng mga temperature requirement. Too much of this temperature, it may affect their growth and reproduction. Too little of this temperature, okay, the same. Okay, it might affect their uh, their growth or reproduction. And there is also this what we call the optimum temperature. So when you say optimum, this is just the right uh, temperature for a species of microbes uh, para sa ilhang mudwell. Okay? So beyond the optimum or below the optimum, it may already affect their their growth. So in most cases, ano mga bacteria na to, they they we can eliminate them via extreme heat, di ba? So water we we have to boil, kana siya, okay? So kung pwede po nato makontrol ang microbial growth ang ilang reproduction nga kung gamay kayong temperature di ba when when we freeze or when we refrigerate our food okay so di, do guys yung mapanos actually kanang mga frozen na to, ng mga products even though nga frozen na siya it will still spoil pero since minimum kayo yung yung temperature hinay kayo ang reproduction sa katong mga microorganisms that can spoil our food okay so that is why to control microorganisms particularly bacteria is either we increase temperature or we reduce the temperature however at the optimum temperature kaning paborito kay dila nga temperature dinha sila managhan okay so if we see our food nga mapanos or mo spoil then we can say nga optimum temperature kay paspas kaayo diba sa kanang sa tong balay pasag na lang nato ato ang kanon atong bahaw or nga to ang bread Okay, one or two days after ana, it's already spoiled because they they dwell in this optimum temperature. Okay, so that is why you can say nga katong mga cooler if if we can if we put it sa kanilitong epidemiological nga aspect uh, regions nga that have lower nga mga temperature have lesser infection rate, di ba? Kaning nasa upper nga hemisphere sa mga cooler nga mga regions lower ang ilang infection rate. However, the tropical regions have the optimum temperature for most pathogens. That is why in tropical nga mga regions, okay, tropical nga mga regions, even subtropical regions, say, say for example, Africa ta ng mga init-init nga mga regions, uh, mas paspas ang ilahang itawag na to. Mas mas favorable na siya nga mga nga mga nga, nga temperature. That's why we can expect more um, infections in tropical and subtropical ng mga regions of the planet. Okay? So, kana siya. So, I hope na na may nakuhaan to. Okay, what about gases? So, there are also those microorganisms that are um, aerobic, meaning to say it requires oxygen, and there are those that are anaerobic microorganisms. So, this is what I mentioned a while ago, that not all organisms require oxygen for survival. Okay, because there are those anaerobic microorganisms that the their long-term exposure to oxygen, particularly atmospheric oxygen, will cause them to to die. Okay, example for that is kaning itaw nito Clostridium tetani. I don't know if you are familiar with Clostridium tetani, the causative agent of uh, kaning itaw tetanus. Okay, 
te ano so that's actually kaya mo ka na kanang uh, matunok mo glansang maingo na nga ipadugo ipadugo okay because if if you let it bleed expose ni mo ang wound especially kanang na na mga uh, known nga mga kanang bitaw presence of yung tetani their presence uh, the presence of oxygen will kanang kill them okay kana siya what else uh, postidium botolino botolisen food poisoning okay um kada bitawng mga food poisoning okay so uh, food poisoning usually comes from kani bitawng mga canned goods so kung magpalit kani ta og kuan magpalit kani ta og dilata sa supermarket make sure nga wala na siya lumping because kung lumping gani na it is expected nga kanang lumping is na na siya ay gamay kayo nga hole nga potentially din ha makasulod ang postidium botulinum okay since ang sulod sa kaning can ang sulod na kanang masulod na sa sa can lower ang oxygen content niya then they can proliferate or reproduce din ha so kung imuha na siyang paliton and then ang kantong postidium botulinum is mo kaning mo produce yung toxin kaning itawag na itawag botox that's botox ang is botulinum toxin so kung makonsume na nato at a certain level pwede na siyang uh, makamatay okay kanang sa kanang food poisoning okay so kung mo ato mo sa supermarket pili atong walay lumping because ang kanang bitong mga factory sa canned goods na na ilumping ang ilahang product ilahan ng i-dispatch okay kanang siya so that's gas so most most organisms are actually aerobic so it requires oxygen what else ph so there are microorganisms that can thrive in in acidic nga mga environments katong mga acidophiles and there are those that are <coughs> uh, kanang nasa basic or alkaline nga mga environments so that's that's ph okay so in most uh, kanang mga microbes sa ato ang palibot they are acid sensitive so mamatay sila sa acid that's why kanin muriatic acid ilimpyo na to sa to ang uh, kusina okay so their presence can actually kill microorganisms na presence sa acid ng mga chemicals what else pressure okay so na yung mga uh, itong mga uh, archaeans uh, there are those that can occupy the kanong bottom sa ocean Okay, so you can just imagine pila ang pressure sa sa ocean nga kung mugawas ang tao nga ani ka sa bottom sa ocean uh, i pressure ka i shrink ka na tungod sa kadako sa pressure okay so there are, there are microorganisms even though nga microscopic sila but these archaeans at the bottom of the ocean are very mysterious because maka question ta how can they how did they um, manage to survive in a high pressured environment okay and see ya uh, what else radiation okay so radiation sa sun diba we can actually control control that one so ang uv kanin ito ang ultraviolet nga light it's actually one way to sanitize or to eliminate presence of microorganisms in our laboratory we have this uh you uh can we tang ito to clean bench Okay, the clean bench is this is actually where we can perform microbial experiments, particularly magculture ta o microorganisms or transfer ta or magprepare ta o mga culture uh, culture media. We can actually use the clean clean bench. So in order before you use the clean bench, you have to eliminate first or quote unquote to kill uh, microorganisms via the UV radiation. So iona ni mo ang UV light for at least 20 to 30 minutes okay palayo lang ka because this UV light can damage uh, the DNA it might cause cancer so palayo lang ka and then i-off na ina ni mo okay so the presence of UV kaning UV kaning radiation it will actually destroy DNA so once the DNA is destroyed it will uh, it does it will make reproduction of microorganism via binary fission uh, impossible na siya so that's how radiation can actually control uh, growth and reproduction of microorganisms okay yes oh, excuse me na akong daughter unsa ha ah? 
Ah, oh, pagkuha lang diha. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so what about presence of other microorganisms or microbes? Okay. So other microbes can control the presence of other microbes. This is the principle of microbial antagonism. Again, the term for this is microbial antagonism, antagonist. Okay? So, for instance, in our body, diba, we have mentioned the normal microbiota, meaning those that are residents of our body. Okay? So, our body uh, adapted this group of microorganisms that the mere presence of foreign microorganisms, ilahaning awayon ang kaning mga foreign nga mga microorganisms. So, makontrol nila. That's how microorganisms um, affect the growth of other microorganisms. So, mag-away-away po na sila. Okay? So, uh, I hope we are clear on that. Okay? So, uh, microbial growth. So, microbial growth, bacteria re reproduce via binary fission. So, take note that binary fission is uh, a form of asexual reproduction. Meaning to say, there is no new combination of genetic components sa mga cells. Okay? So, unlike sa kaning mga sexually reproducing organisms na, na ay new set of or new recombination of genes. Okay? So, bacterial reproduction can be studied by a growth curve. So, later on, we will study the growth curve. Okay? So, different species have varying reproduction rate. Okay? However, the average in every species, uh, the average reproduction is actually around uh, 20 minutes. Okay, around 20 minutes. Okay, so it can be counted via various laboratory methods. So, the growth curve have different stages. First is the lag phase. Lag, kaneng mo lag. Pareha sa ito ang internet na mo lag. Okay, so LAG. Okay, so mag mobile legend mo or mag minsan na mag dota mo 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 lag hinay kayo so that's lag phase so hinay okay next is exponential growth so from the word exponent pas pas ka iya hang pagtubo then stationary so this is stationary the number of those that uh, reproduce or new batch of cells and the number of those who die are equal so mo na nga steady ang iha then when you talk about death phase, there are more cells that died and there are cells that are being reproduced. So, in figure 3.5, you have there the illustration of binary fission. Okay, so take a look at that one. Uh, the circular chromosome is being doubled. Okay, and then cells to separate into two daughter cells. And take note that these cells are clones, meaning to say they are the same. Okay, figure 3.6, you have here the bacterial growth the lag phase so there's a little uh, rate of reproduction that's the first phase the second phase the exponential phase um, this is where um, the rate of reproduction is faster and higher okay so that is why it will result to more number of cells so in stationary okay when you say stationary the number of those who die Itong mga cells and the number uh, of cells that are being reproduced are equal. That is why you can see there na ni flatten siya. Okay? Ni flatten. Ni flatten the curve. Diba? Ni flatten siya. And then the death phase. When we say the death phase, then there are more cells that die than cells that are being reproduced until such time that when uh, there's such time that uh, wala naging nutrients, then it will totally be eliminated. Okay? Okay, so mga na itong uh, bacterial growth. So, let's take a look at uh, figure 3.6. So, this is the scheme of uh, binary uh, fission. So, you have here the culture medium which contains microorganism. So, the, the first cell there, the first generation, the second generation and 2 to the 4th, uh, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 4th, so on and so forth. Okay, so, um, this, kaning itawag na to binary fission, kaning itawag na to binary fission, um, this will actually continue as long as um, the nutrients, the space, the molecules uh, needed for metabolisms would allow. Okay, so, kaya siya magpadayo na siya. 
However, if the um, nutrients available in the environment will start to decline, then uh, there are cells that will be deprived. Kaya naghanam na ilang lahang number, so ma-deprive siya, so it will die. Okay, so mauna nga, mahimo siyang stationary phase. However, sa katong first part pa lang, katong daghan pa kayo nutrients, so na siya sa exponential nga phase. Okay, so uh, the more depletion of nutrients will result in more deaths than there are nga katong i-reproduce. So that's why na kay death phase. Okay, so clear na na to ang kanigitaw na itong bacterial growth curve. Okay, so let's go to metabolism. Okay, so when we talk about metabolism, it is defined as the summary of all the chemical reactions in a cell. Okay, so take note ha, nga, nga different molecules will be the transformed into different other molecules. Okay, so na ay molecules nga ginabuild na ay po yung molecules nga ginabreak down so uh, when you say anabolism anabolism is the the um, building up of different molecules so you have there the monomers sa different biomolecules okay, gisumpay-sumpay siya hangtun mahimo siyang larger biomolecules or ang isa ka biomolecule is mo form siya o complex sa other biomolecule, then that's anabolism. But when you say catabolism, this is where larger molecules will be broken down into smaller uh, molecular subunits. Okay, that's catabolism. Okay, so kana siya. So, we also have enzymes. So, when you talk about enzymes, they are uh, known as biological catalyst. Okay, so when you talk about uh, catalyst, they participate in the chemical reaction but they are not consumed in the process okay and at the same time the role of catalyst is very significant in in cells because they speed up reaction okay ilhangi pa speed up ang reaction without enzymes siguro mo times 10 or times 100 or times 1000 ang time nga gina require for a molecule whether it is broken down or being built up okay so mo na ang role sa enzyme so ginapapaspas nila ang uh, competition sa metabolism either anabolic reaction or catabolic reaction okay so uh, enzymes are also molecularly specific meaning to say that for in every ha kada good uh, metabolic reaction there is a specific enzyme assigned for that reaction so if there are 1000 uh, metabolic reactions in a cell then we can expect that there are also 1000 different enzymes each enzyme is assigned to a specific reaction okay because they are molecularly specific okay so each enzyme is characterized by molecular configurations so Enzymes are classified according to functions. There are those that are oxidoreductases. Okay, so the redox, those that are assigned for the reduction oxidation. Okay, so katong nga mga groups are oxidoreductases. Uh, we also have transferases assigned sa katong pag transfer of different nga mga molecules. Hydrolases, lyases, isomerases, and ligases. Okay, so to name a few, actually there are still other uh, enzymatic group. Okay, so in figure 3.17, enzymes are catalyst where it speeds up chemical reaction. Note that for a specific substrate, for specific substrates, there are specific enzymes. Okay, so kana siya. So, naakay different, in an enzyme, there are actually na mga different units. So, naakay apo enzyme, so naakay cofactor, and of course, uh, it will react to specific substrate so uh, take note that these enzymes are actually uh, proteins okay so they are actually proteins okay so figures 3.8 and other illustration of the role of enzyme in separating components of a molecule of a molecule into different products so take a look at the substrate okay so nakikitawag na active site sa kaning enzyme so this is where the substrate will bind then when this uh, substrate will interact with the enzyme it will then be broken into 
different uh, products okay so can i see so na ay mo mo break down na po mo build up okay so if this product kaning duha ka products kanang blue o yellow is isumpay na po siya balik then it requires another set of enzyme okay so let's go to energy so energy usable energy is required or produced during metabolic processes okay kanang energy Okay, so I don't know if you, if the definition of energy is the ability to do work, di ba? Mao na siya. Okay, na abet ato y kwan sa radio ng basta energy per me, yah, di ba? So kana siya energy because uh, without energy, it is impossible for um, metabolism to push through. Okay, and take note that metabolism kana gito ng natug metabolism. This is essential in the Uh, continuous existence of different cells without any metabolism without any metabolism uh, uh, there will be no building up there will be no broking, breaking down breaking. there will be no breaking down of different molecules and if that happens then the cell is in danger okay so uh, potentially lethal na siya kung wala metabolism and take note that metabolism uses energy so kung wala na energy that there will be no metabolism and if there will be no metabolism metabolism then mato magcascade na din ang different um, disaster molecular disaster inside the cell so nutrients are in high demand during energy production so cells have many biomechanical pathways that yields energy so one of that is katubitong cellular respiration okay so this is very common one of the very common topics in biochemistry okay so ATP okay ATP is the primary primary energy currency so at the adenosine triphosphate so ATP is the same uh, ATP in eukaryotic cell is the same ATP in prokaryotic cell okay so cellular respiration pertains to biochemical pathways that produces energy and there are two ways First is the aerobic, and the second one is the anaerobic. So when we say aerobic respiration, this is where it utilizes the uh, oxygen molecules, sa yahang biochemical pathways. So every pathway uh, yields different amount of energy. Glucose is the most common source of energy, and glycolysis is the process that uh, breaks down the six carbon glucose towards ATP production. So man ng aerobic respiration. Okay, so uh, when you talk about aerobic respiration, the glycolysis from the word glyco, which means sugar, and lysis is the breaking down. Okay, so the aim of this glycolysis is to break down glucose into pyruvic acid. Take note that glycolysis and glucose is a six carbon uh, carbohydrates. Okay, so after at the end of the glycolysis, it will yield uh, two molecules of three carbon pyruvic acid. Kay 6 man ang glucose divided by 2 man ang tag 3 sila. Okay, so on that process, the breaking down of glycolysis will yield uh, primarily 2 ATP molecules. So, kaning pyruvic acid will then enter the Krebs cycle. Okay, so this Krebs cycle and this is actually uh, sa eukaryotic cells. So, it happens inside the uh, membrane of the mitochondria, manggitawag ang mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell, so Krebs cycle so in the process, it will release carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is a waste product of aerobic respiration at the same time, a waste product of metabolism Okay, so that is why um, carbon dioxide will then be expelled from the cell and from the cell into the environment, so satua is expelled through the blood and then from the blood to our lungs and then sa atong lungs then we exhale so ang ato ang ang air nga ato ang gina exhale is actually made up of mostly of carbon dioxide so the krebs cycle will uh, allow the uh, process of kanigitaw nga tog uh, electron transport chain nga kanibitong ipasapasa ang electron sa membrane sa mitochondria and this process kaning electron transport chain Uh, with the presence of oxygen sa mga nang uh, itawag siya aerobic respiration kaya mo enter ng oxygen sa kining process okay so kana siya nga process electron transport chain will then then yield uh, 36 molecules of adenosine triphosphate 
okay so mo na nga gitawag mitochondria og um, the powerhouse of the cell because it will uh, provide energy to provide power to cells kaning ATP so uh, you can just imagine that's just one uh, glucose molecule so in can be tong isa isa ka uh, butil sa rice how many glucose ang na adin hang nga present so that's amount of energy so you can just expect nga uh, before kung, kung ikaw before uh, going into strenuous or highly physical or physically demanding ang mga activities then mo ni gitawag to carbo loading because it is expected nga imo utilize ang um, energy nga imo hang gikan sa imo gitawon aron na kay energy so uh, those organisms nga minus na og ATP production makita nimo nga magluya because wala na may wala na may power okay wala na energy nga makapapush sa metabolism for for uh, different processes molecular processes okay so uh, figure 3.10 this is just another illustration of glycolysis so glucose like a lot of glucose so there are just a lot of enzymes the isomerases glucokinases kato so you're transforming or uh, reconfigure ang uh, glucose into different forms until such time that it will uh, yield two pyruvate ng mga molecules so kaning pyruvate ng mga molecules this is will now then enter the Krebs cycle which is in uh, 3.11 figure 3.11 take a look at the right side there pyruvate that's from glycolysis so it will enter the Krebs cycle so there's still a lot of um, uh, molecular configuration with a lot of different enzymes involved until such time that it will the the kanigitawag na to og um nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide ang, uh, molecules will enter into the transport chain the electron transport chain so from the electron transport chain uh, na siya yung mga series of different ng mga activities where ang adenosine diphosphate add na siya og isa ka phosphate uh, phosphate then it will uh, moto mo add ang isa ka hydrogen then it will yield uh, adenosine triphosphate okay so din na siya sa membrane sa um, mitochondria okay so that's the aerobic uh, figure 3.13 another perspective there na kay glucose monet siya o 2 ATP okay sa so glucose and then after the Krebs cycle another 2 ATP okay so electron transport chain approximately 32 ATP that is why conventionally by average and in most cases there are 36 ATPs that are produced in one glucose molecule okay so maybe you uh, you might uh, encounter um, 38 or some 34 ATP so it depends on the uh, uh, um, species that uh, actually perform or the cell that actually performs the uh, glycolysis or the energy production but in average that actually the the number of ATP is actually 36 okay so in uh, th that's for the aerobic I mean to say the involvement of oxygen okay so what about the um, anaerobic respiration so anaerobic respiration this is the uh, process where energy is produced without take not how without the presence of oxygen okay so for instance here in glucose there are six uh, carbon molecule so it will still uh, proceed as uh, sa ihang natural way However, the absence of uh, di ba na kay pyruvate kaning pyruvate katong do at the end of the glycolysis. However, pyru pyruvate nga uh, kung mosulod siya sa katong gitaw na to og uh, crab cycle. Okay, kung mosulod siya sa crab cycle, wala na may oxygen. Okay, wala na siya oxygen. So the absence of oxygen will result nga instead of uh, katong mga usable nga mga katong nad na ketinamide adenine dinucleotide okay ang mahitabo na kay wala may oxygen mo produce siya og ethanol and lactate so ethanol is an alcohol kay wala na may oxygen and of course lactate or the lactic acid 
Okay? So, the presence of lactic acid, no? Anong saka to ang pamaol? Diba? Kung pamaulan ta. So, kung pamaulan ta, that means to say, is imohang gipugos, ang imohang muscle, to produce energy, okay? Even without oxygen. Okay? Wala maanad ang imohang muscles nga mo carry ana nga amount of work okay kay dili pa kaabot ang oxygen sa kanang nga muscles pero imo hag yung gipugos wala exercise exercise okay that is why it is expected nga after a few hours or yeah after a few hours or a day after you made that activity then pamaulan ka because of lactic acid deposition sa imo hang muscle fibers okay at the same time sa ethanol okay kay mo ha magipugos ang imohang muscles without any oxygen involved that is why the more ka nga magayos ana nga muscle panalita the same activity for the next 3 3 months or 4 months or the same activity for over a year makita nimo nga after a week or so at least a week okay dili na ka because your muscles are already uh, have already adapted Okay, and then at the same time, naka-adapt na sila, then mo take in na sila og oxygen sa ilahang sa, sa cell. Okay, aron dili na mo produce og lactic acid. However, ang kanyang itawag na itong lactic, lactate, ang kanyang lactic acid, even though nga na-deposit na sa itong muscle fibers or sa itong cells, it will still still be transformed into nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Okay, so transform na gihapon na siya into NADH. Okay. Transform siya into NADH Okay, aron isulod siya sa imuhang uh, Krebs cycle Okay, so ma Matransform siya that, That's another biochemical pathway Okay, so muna siya gitawag nito Anaerobic respiration So in prokaryotes, ATP Kaya kaning aerobic o anaerobic Kaning atong gidis ka sa a while ago uh, Naaran ni siya sa Sa mga eukaryotic cells But in prokaryotes, since they do not have their mitochondria in their cells okay because remember only ribosome is the uh, prominent uh, cell sa uh, itawag na ito uh, uh, prokaryotic cells okay so uh, organelle the uh, prominent uh, organelle sa prokaryotic cells ang ribosomes so in prokaryotes ATP are produced in the cell membrane rather than in mitochondria okay so naagihapon siya eh, um, ATP production even though uh, absent ang mitochondria so it is actually more uh, it, it, it actually occurs sa uh, yahang uh, plasma membrane or cell membrane okay so let's see what about biosynthesis so when you talk about biosynthesis take note ha, nga, cells have this uh, capacity to recycle molecules inside the cell inside sa ilang system Okay, so there are also those uh, pananitan, uh, there are also those um, cells or kanang molecules that are used for different nga purposes. Daghan siya og purpose. Okay, for instance, ang glucose. Ang glucose is not only for energy production, it can also be transformed into other nga mga molecules okay, nga magamit ihapon sa cells. This is known as uh, biosynthesis. So, the definition of biosynthesis is the making of biological materials. So, there is what is what we call the amphibolism. So, amphibolism is the combination of the anaerobic and catabolic reactions for the improvement of cellular efficiency. Okay, so as I have mentioned earlier, nga, there is this repair mechanism. There is this repair mechanism sa cell, whether it is prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Okay, na siya wear and tear. Okay, so in order for cells to repair then it needs materials molecular materials from the environment okay similar to kanabitong nikaon ka kay aron ang energy nga imuhang mako from your food is imuhang gastuhon so once nga magasto na po na siya nga energy mukaon na ka so i mean that's that's how the i mean we can say that that's the economics of biochemistry in cells Okay, so cellular metabolism produce only a few amount of waste. Okay, what else? So, catabolized materials are used for other purposes. So, this is what I was saying a while ago. Nga glucose is not only intended for ATP production. Okay, glucose may enter into a different biochemical pathway in which ang iyang result will 
contribute to the efficiency sa cell. Okay? So, for instance, the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, this is actually uh, part of the uh, glycolysis, won't proceed to Krebs cycle. Diba? Katong, katong uh, G3P, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So, there are those that will not proceed to cell cycle. So, in gluconeogenesis, the absence of glucose would allow the cell to utilize pyruvate to start the synthesis of glucose. Okay? So, lahim ng glycolysis, lahim po gluconeogenesis. Okay? So, I mean, if you can just, I don't know if you can, if you have an idea kung unsa complex ang biochemical pathway. Okay? Even in in prokaryotic microorganisms. That is why, kaning gitawang itong biosynthesis. This is the very reason why microorganisms, particularly ang mga prokaryotic cells, are no longer considered as simple. Diba, um, you have, I don't know if you have heard this, nga, ang prokaryotic cells are simpler compared to eukaryotic cells. Okay? I-compare na nato. However, because of these complex biochemical pathways in prokaryotic cells, we can no longer rule out or we can no longer consider that prokaryotic cells are simpler compared to eukaryotic cells because biochemical pathways alone are complex okay kana say i hope uh, na nakuha to nimo ninyo ang ako ang point okay so take a look at this one uh, ang glucose the glucose molecule pwede siya iadto siya sa glycolysis glycolysis kata tong gi mention is just one pathway so there are other ways nga may utilize ang glucose another use sa, sa, sa glucose is hexose monophosphate shunt it is also used in uronic acid pathway other carbohydrates what else glycogenesis okay lahi pod ang glycogenesis lahi ang glycogenesis what else lipogenesis or the synthesis of fats or the essential amino the non essential amino acid nga production okay so it can ang, ang glucose molecule can be reconfigured into different other ng mga molecules it's not exclusive only to glycolysis Okay, so that is what biosynthesis is all about. Okay, so there are various, many different um, biomolecules that are inside the cells that are observing, okay, various different steps. So it's actually internet. It's actually a BC. A cell is actually BC biochemically speaking. Okay, so another example for biosynthesis is photosynthesis. Okay, that's in th uh, figure 3.17. Note that photosynthesis is not exclusively for the production of glucose alone, but it is also highly involved in other significant process that produces various products such as tannins and terpenes. Okay, na siya. So, daghang kayo upaagi ang photosynthesis. I mean, daghang uses ang photosynthesis. Okay? So, I hope uh, your, your view on, on biochemistry is... Na, na add na ang yung view sa biochemistry it's actually a beautiful field okay so in photosynthesis this is the process by which green plants and some other microorganisms use sunlight to synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water and photosynthesis in plants greatly involves the green pigment chlorophyll and generates oxygen as a byproduct so uh, in an in aerobic respiration the byproduct is carbon dioxide so we release the carbon dioxide and these photosynthetic microorganisms will capture this carbon dioxide and utilize it to form uh, glucose so photosynthesis and their byproduct is oxygen so ang oxygen na po di capture na po sa animals and then so, na siya. so that's what we call the interdependency of living organisms um, katong mga photosynthetic microorganisms need us and we need photosynthetic microorganisms so that's that's uh, interdependency okay so photosynthesis can also be made possible in uh, micro microorganisms mga photosynthetic bacteria and of course we have algae and of course we have <coughs> uh, protists so fungi do not uh, do photosynthesis okay so uh, figure 3.20 so photosynthesis can be divided into two you have the light dependent reactions where it needs sunlight and light independent reactions the ATP and NADPH from sun from light dependent reactions will later join the Calvin cycle 
of the light independent reaction. Okay, so kana siya. So Calvin cycle is equivalent to the Krebs cycle in um, in animal cells and other and other ng mga cells in in nature or in the environment. Okay, so take note hanga na kay light dependent reaction, which means to say the presence of light ng katung iyang radiation ng iyang energy from the sun will activate different molecules and then these activated molecules will uh, create kaning cascading and with ang mga domino effects okay sa different molecules and then it will then actually activate further to produce the nicotinamide adenine the dinucleotide phosphate which will then proceed to the Calvin cycle and in the Calvin cycle it will produce later on kanikita uh, untog sugar and primarily that's glucose diba so glucose na form na ang glucose from the photosynthesis and this glucose will then be consumed by animals and other microorganisms and then and this glucose then will be the one that will energize the cell so hinana ang iyahang iyahang gitawag na tog economics so that is why katong atong gi mention uh, we are actually dependent on uh, photoautotrophs primarily ang ato ang ang basis gyud sa food chain the basis of the food chain are actually the photoautotrophs because the photoautotrophs have this capacity to um, synthesize the energy or kaning, kaning storage energy kaning gitaw to glucose which is actually the primary source or yeah, the primary source of energy uh, in many cells in the environment including animals okay so kana siya okay so before we end uh, please check whether you have identified kani sa inyong learning checklist checklist identified some molecules and its role in microbial cells uh, be able to classify microbes based on metabolic patterns and describe microbial reproduction okay so i think that ends our discussion uh, again this is edward opena uh, your course instructor uh, instructor for microbiology and this is topic number three microbial metabolism nutrition growth and ecology okay so thank you very much for listening i hope you have learned something and see you next topic okay so bye bye and god bless us all